but timelines are tight. And the Wolf is on the prowl to keep the teams in line. All of the teams have opted for garage carpet, which is really cool. Except right now, none of them are ready. <laughs> He's always on the prowl. <laughs> More wolf jokes coming up before the end of the show. We're almost at crunch time with the Block NZ on point. The houses are listed and the open homes have commenced. We catch up with site foreman Peter Wolfcamp, also known as the Wolf, Wolfie, or even Camp Dad this time around. Welcome, Peter. Yeah, I haven't heard the Camp Dad one. That's a new one yeah, on me. I was about me. to say, how do we feel about Camp Dad? Um, well, like I say, it's a new one on me. I'll stick with Wolfie. Yeah, I think we'll, I think that's what we're going to stick with too. Good. Definitely. Done. Um, so how is it going? I mean, it's... I think we can say you've had your hands full this season. Would that be fairly accurate to say? Um, look, like most seasons, we've got four houses, we've got 12 weeks, we've got four groups of effectively amateurs who are coming to do the work. Saying that, we've got Stu this year who's a tradie and uh, Ben as an architectural graduate. So there's some experience there, but I think it is still always a daunting task for all of the teams and it's one hell of a challenge. Mm. Yeah. If we think back to uh, Stu and Amy, they hit their disqualification from the room sure. reveal, the $5,000 fine yep. for using an electrical tradie after hours. Seems that health and safety was a big focus this year. Why was that such a big deal? Oh, look, it's always really important. And the fact is, at the end of the series, I want all of the contestants, everyone who works on the site, to go home with all their fingers and toes yeah. and still be able to hear and all the rest of it. So health and safety, a priority for us. And the other thing is we operate under a set of rules, whether they're building rules or they are rules around the resource consent. And it's quite clear. We say that we're going to finish work at 6 o'clock, so mm -hmm. we'll finish work at 6. Yeah, it's very it to say that some people have got on not particularly well and other team members have got on very well. Um, blue team member Ben Speedy stood down for a week, wasn't he, because after an <laughs> onset incident? Well, a couple of days anyway. Are you yeah. sneaking into the girls' house at night? Is that right? Well, look, he went in apparently to borrow some tape. Oh, of course he did. What time was this then? Oh, yeah. I don't know, 9, 10 o'clock I always night. borrow tape <laughs> at that time of night. Well, yeah. when you're working till 2 or 3 wow. in the morning, yes, you do. So, anyway, look, he, he went barrelling up the stairs, didn't see... I'd fluoroed this piece of timber, which they'd used as a platform to um, to be able to work at heights. Um, he didn't see it, whacked straight into it, took a tumble, and in the end we went to and got some advice. Best advice is, after some sort of head knock, he wasn't particularly serious, is you've got to take some time off. Yeah, it's like rugby, isn't it? Yeah. You've exactly. got to send strap back out exactly. the field. And as I said to him, look, it's your brain, I'm sure you want to look after it, so two days in bed, you're sorted. So... Let's put the, the t title Camp Dad aside, because sure. you're, you're, you're happy not to run with that one, but in, <laughs> in the essence of the job, have you ever felt this much like Camp Dad? Because it certainly comes across like that. Um, look, I suppose I've... I want, in the end, what I really want for the teams is that they produce the very best house that they're capable of doing. Um, I've got some experience in that. Um, they perhaps uh, don't have as much experience as me, don't have as much experience as me in the end. And so there's kind of like, I'm going to suggest you do it that way, and then if the suggestion's not listened to, then I'm just going to insist that but you do it my way. But is this season different to the previous ones? Uh, look, I don't know that I seem any different, but um, the feedback that I'm bargy. getting is yeah. that, yeah, um, maybe I've sort of embraced my um, grey-haired, grumpy old man status <laughs> and, um, and rolling with that. Because it feels like you've come across as like, you're just not taking any rubbish from anyone anymore. No, it's just like, you no. know what? You've done this. You've been around the block. You know what's going on the block. The block. <laughs> <laughs> you're not well, going to take, gonna you're not take any, any nonsense from anyone. Yeah, and look, you know, this. I have a fair, I have a large amount of responsibility, not just in terms of health and safety, but in terms of compliance. And then also for people that are going to buy these houses, it's real money at the mm -hmm. end of the day. We're going to go to the auction. Someone's going to put their hand up and they want to buy a really good house. And I want to deliver them one. Yeah. What surprised you most this season? Oh, look, every year, this year no exception, I'm amazed at the creativity that all of the teams bring to it. Now, whether that's sort of from an architectural point of view, um, in House 2 with Ben and Tom, or just in terms of the colouring, the styling, you know, you can go to a tile shop or to choose paint, and, you know, what they come back with is remarkable. So, and the other thing that's really, really cool, uh, and I've been through the houses a lot now where it's a little bit quieter, is that effectively we had four identical four floor plans. Mm. What you see today are four distinctly different houses, and that's great. It is what you want. Um, what have you done there then? There's a bit of a side. Yeah, that's there. today's efforts. 
Got to pay I'm attention with there. those swords, Pete. Right. <laughs> um, so how early on can you pick a winning team, do you think? Is there anyone you're thinking, OK, You, this you can't pick good. a winning team. That's the beauty of it. In the end, it's on the night of the auction, mm -hmm. and that's live. And well, I don't somebody know... wants to pay and where, well, how they want to pay it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I think the teams that do well are the ones that come well prepared, well, you know, they've got an idea of where they want to end up. I mean, in the end, they don't know what the house looks like when they start. Uh, but they've got their design ethic, I suppose, worked out. They know what their styles are going to be. And if, they're, if they plan well and then they execute well, they'll end well. Mm. One of Auckland's favourite topics is house prices. Of course. Do you feel like you've got a knack now, you know, maybe not which house is going to come out <laughs> top, but going, yeah, we're going in at this price point? Um, look, we're, we're still to set the reserves, um, and I'm not part of that process. It's interesting at Hobsonville Point because, you know, uh, go back a couple of years, there was basically no housing. Currently, there's 1,800 houses that have been constructed on the point. Right. Eventually, there'll be 4,500. There's a quite a wide range of prices there. I mean, there's some affordable housing there, there's mm. some luxury mm. housing there. Where we fit, well, we'll find out. We'll at the find live out. Yeah. Now, tell me, what do you think would really surprise people the most? People that are watching at home, what would surprise them the most about what goes on behind the scenes at the block? Oh, look, in the end, I guess people would underestimate just how hard all of the teams work. Because mm. I, I know there's, you know there's the challenges and there's the drama and all the rest of it. But in the end, there is the sight of teams at one, mm. two, three o'clock in the morning working their backside. I think off, it looks basically. extremely difficult. Yeah. It's like, really, yeah. really hard work. And then it's just the constant housekeeping. And I'm always at them for cleaning up and being orderly. And it's, oh, why do we have to do that? Because yeah. it helps you work quickly. Over the years, is there one thing that you hear contestants say when they've finished, like, you know, for example, I'm <laughs> never, never doing that again, never do that again. Or, or I'd love to do that again. Is there a <clears> common <throat> theme that comes out of contestants, win or lose or otherwise, you know? Look, I would like to think that all of them go away thinking, gosh, that was a real, um, a, a genuine challenge as well. So I, I had to push myself to achieve just the, the physical work. I had to push myself to sort of hold it together for 12 weeks. Um, they work incredibly hard. It is, it is a marathon. I keep saying to them, you know, especially at the beginning when there's lots of energy and they're all staying up all night and all the rest of it, that's fine in week two or three. Get to week 10, 11 and 12, you want to have managed yourself so that you're in a good condition at the end. Because quite literally when they leave on the last day of the block, that's it. I change the door codes and mm. we're done. And that is it. Hey, very quick answer here. Sure. From the open homes, yes. is there any clear winner at the moment? Um, I think that some of the, what was really interesting is that people came with a preconceived idea, I like that house, and then having gone through them, they've seen something perhaps in the other houses that they weren't expecting. So Colour, who? design. <laughs> look, Give me some I, names. I, look, Quick answer I, an outstanding piece. one it has got to be Ben and Tom. Right. They okay. love the Good. architecture. And that's it what all I comes together in the end. And that's what I wanted from you. Thank you so much. Done. Always a pleasure. The Block NZ continues on three Sundays at 7 and Monday to Wednesday at 7.30.